okay <coughs> so uh, in the previous uh, lecture uh, we were discussing the uh, full wave rectifier uh, with rl load name for uh, uh, continuous and discontinuous uh, mode of operation so uh, in this uh, example uh, the uh, triggering angle or the delay angle is given as 60 degree uh, which is less than theta that is the uh, angle of the impedance so it remains in the continuous conduction mode so with the con continuous conduction mode the uh, average output voltage is obtained as uh, 2 vm by pi cos alpha which is uh, 54 now uh, for obtaining the uh, you know the uh, rms current uh, in order to get the uh, losses we have to find out the uh, harmonic component of the current that means second harmonic fourth harmonics and so on right? so to get the second harmonic and all these and right? we need to know uh, the harmonic voltage right? so as you know that i n is given as uh, v n over z n now here we will find out the uh, second harmonic uh, which is uh, v2 by uh, z2 then uh, fourth harmonic as v4 by z4 then sixth harmonic as V6 by Z6. Even if you just consider the second harmonic, that will be fair enough, okay? Now, uh, so to get the uh, harmonic voltages, uh, you need to uh, use the formula for the uh, harmonic analysis that was done here. So it's uh, like you have to find out uh, AN, you have to find out AN, BN, then you find out VN, okay? So with this uh, uh, formula, uh, they have calculated here and the values are uh, listed, okay? And Zn you can calculate uh, from this formula, uh, which is Z is equal to Zn is equal to R plus Jn omega L. Take the magnitude of this, that gives you the impedance. Right? And then divide V by Z, you get the harmonic current. And once you know the harmonic current, then you can use the formula to calculate the RMS current. And from the uh, RMS current, uh, you will be able to get the losses, okay? Now, this we have seen. Now, what we can do that instead of using the uh, uh, formula for Vn, you can use also this graph, you know, you can use this graph. You can use this graph for the uh, calculation of the uh, harmonic voltages. Now, how we can use this graph? You see, uh, in this graph, the uh, on this axis we have vn over vm that means the normalized value of the harmonic voltage right? and on x axis we have alpha okay so you see uh, here it is given alpha is equal to 60 degree so corresponding to 60 degree which is here we can calculate the magnitude of uh, uh, all the harmonic voltages right? for example at eighth harmonic uh, sixth harmonic uh, fourth harmonic and then the second harmonic so if you look here uh, this is the uh, second harmonic uh, voltage for 60 degree duration now this is around uh, you see uh, this is uh, 0.6 this is 0.7 so this is around 0.76 uh, or 0.78 like this okay so consider this as 0.76 if it is 0.76 that means uh, your uh, vn uh, vn is equal to 0.76 of vm okay now what is vm vm is the peak value any so the uh, rms value is 120 so the peak value is 169 any so this is this into root 2 into 120 okay if you calculate this how much you get any so this is uh, uh, 0.76 times 2 root times uh, uh, 120, 120. So this comes out as 128.97. This is from the graph. And what you see here uh, from the uh, analytical expression, from analytical expression, what you get is 129.8. And here what I'm getting is 128.8. So very close, very close. So instead of going to the, uh, you know, uh, calculation by analytical way, you can also use graphical approach. And this I was trying to say. Now for n is equal to four, uh, 
uh, you see for n is equal to uh, 4 that means fourth harmonic at 60 degree at 60 degree it is almost like 0.5 it is almost like uh, sorry 0 0.3 it is almost 0 0.3 so what is 0 0.3 so let us calculate 0 0.3 so v uh, uh, v4 v4 will be equal to uh, 0 0.3 times root 2 times 120 which is what I mean, let us see divide by uh, 0 0.76 multiplied by 0 0.3 which is 50.9 this is 50.9 volt okay and what you see that you calculated 50.4 volt I mean. so this is very close to this graphical method understand any question here So, doctor. Next is the uh, RLE load, and uh, for RLE load, when you have uh, the uh, uh, the uh, battery here, then as you know that the if this is the source voltage and this is the battery voltage VDC, the minimum uh, alpha will be this much. You cannot operate your uh, uh, converter below alpha minimum because it will be only triggered this will only trigger uh, when you are when the when the source voltage is greater than the dc voltage when source voltage is greater than dc voltage then only it will trigger that means your operating range is this from here to here this is your alpha minimum this is your alpha maximum okay so this is the expression that alpha must be greater than this value then only you will operate the machine the uh, converter and then the average output voltage will be 2 vm by pi cos alpha is the same the uh, output average current will be v naught by r here now it will be v naught minus vdc because this is your v naught here and vdc is your uh, battery voltage dc source voltage so v naught minus vdc by r so v naught you can also write as i naught r plus vdc okay so this is how you get the output voltage and this is power loss this is the power which is absorbed by the battery i naught into vdc okay and this is how the uh, this will look like this is the s1 this is s1 uh, this is s3 this is s2 this is s4 so s1 and s2 is on here and s3 and s4 is on here so when s s1 and s2 is on you get at, at an angle alpha at an ang angle alpha you will, you will get this as your output voltage and then at pi plus alpha the second pair is on so you will get this as the output so this is what you get as the this is how you get the output voltage this is how you get the output voltage okay doctor yes doctor why do we have negative uh, uh, output yeah because of this inductor I mean, you will have negative voltage also okay if it is a, a r load then you will you will not have any uh, you will not have this you will have oh, only this okay okay you will have only this okay but due to inductance it goes in the negative also okay got it the control rectifier has an ac source of 240 volt rms at 60 hertz the dc source is 100 volt r is equal to this and inductor and an inductor large enough to cause continuous current determine the delay angle such that the power absorbed by the dc source is 1000 watt so you have to find out what should be the dc uh, what should be the alpha so that the dc source absorbs uh, 1000 watt okay now uh, we have to find out the angle alpha this is what we have to find out so how we get the angle alpha you know that uh, the output voltage is equal to uh, vm by 2 pi cos alpha yes so if we know uh, v naught then we can find out uh, cos alpha then we can find out cos alpha Okay, so what is output? Output voltage is not given. Only VDC is given. How we can find output voltage? 
so you see the power is given for the uh, dc source as 1000 the if the power is uh, given then uh, for 100 volt dc source and it is able to supply 1000 uh, watt that means the current that should flow through the dc source should be equal to vdc by uh, uh, idc should be equal to, sorry vdc into idc should the power of the dc should be equal to idc into vdc so from here i can calculate the current current has uh, pdc upon vdc and this is 1000 watt divided by the uh, dc voltage which is 100 so this is 10 ampere so 10 ampere current should flow 10 ampere current should flow so now you see this 10 ampere that will flow through the battery is your also the output current is the same the same current that will also flow through r and l okay so now fr uh, from here we can find out the uh, output voltage so output voltage is vdc plus i not r that i just mentioned here so from here we calculate the output voltage so once we calculate the output voltage we can find out what is the angle of delay angle which is 46 degree now with this 46 degree now you say they determine the value of inductance okay uh, so alpha alpha we already calculated in our next part it says that determine the value of inductance that will limit the peak to peak load current variations to 2 ampere so what is peak to peak current load variation you see uh, the uh, the load current the load current is like this the load current is like this and what is the peak to peak current ripple so this is your minimum and this is the maximum yes so this is the ripple current honey this is the peak to peak ripple current doctor i have this... a question yes uh doctor uh shouldn't the current be negative uh no current will never will not be negative the voltage can be negative for the uh, you know reverse power but uh, the current will not be negative why the current will be negative this is this because is of the, the dc source like. the dc source has the uh, positive uh, terminal towards the the other end of the power supply yes but you see here v not is higher than v dc okay how much is your v not oh. v not is 150 so since here you have 150 and this is 100 volt so current will flow in this direction only oh, okay okay yeah understood so now Uh, we have to find out what is the peak to peak current you see what is peak to peak current is given as 2 ampere this is peak to peak current that is the variation in the uh, output current and it 2 ampere corresponding to this we have to find out the inductance value okay so to get the inductance value that means we have to get the impedance and what should be the impedance and, and the peak is given so peak current you see uh, just can we uh, assume second harmonic forget about uh, fourth and sixth harmonic so if we just consider the second harmonic variation suppose this variation in the current is due to second harmonic due to second harmonic suppose this is due to second harmonic so due to second harmonic so that means uh, second harmonic uh, peak peak current will be equal to v2 upon z2 second harmonic peak current this is second harmonic peak current okay second harmonic peak current i have to find out z2 i have to find out z2 now what is given here it is given peak to peak load current variation peak to peak load current variation so peak to peak current is 2 ampere so what what will be the value of peak current tell me the peak to peak variation the peak to peak variation say this is your current should be one doctor yes so this is your peak to peak current 2 ampere so the peak current will be the peak current will be 1 ampere because it's peak to peak current so peak and current will be 1 ampere so this is given as 1 ampere but also we need to know what is v2 so second harmonic voltage we can get from the graph or from the equation any the equation that is for an and bn you can get any either you use analytical or you use graph any so for the graph we can use from the graph it is see uh, angle is 
46 degree. So corresponding to 46 degree, what is harmonic voltage? So corresponding to 46 degree, the harmonic voltage is 0.68. Vn upon Vm is 0.68. So from here, we can get the, this is second harmonic, so I should write it. V2 by uh, Vm is 0.68. So V2 is equal to 0.68 times Vm. And what is Vm? Vm is 240 volt into root 2. 0.68 into root 2 into 240 volt. This RMS is given as 240. So what you get? This you get as 230 volt V2. So once you know 230 volt, then you can get the value of Z2. Okay. And Z2 is Z2, you can get Z2 as Z2 as uh, V2 upon I2. V2 is 230. This is 1. So this is 230 ohm. So impedance is known as 230 ohm. So from this, you can calculate the value of inductance. Okay. You, if you neglect resistance because it is mostly inductance which is present here, even if you, you include, you can include resistance in the calculation, then it will be like R square plus 2 omega L square. From here you can calculate or just you neglect R, then it will be only 2 omega L. So from here you calculate L as 0 0.31. Okay. Is it clear? Yes. Doctor, do we take the second harmonic as a standard always? Uh, because you know uh, the fourth you see here the peak value of this is how much is about, point it's about nine, yes? point point nine, nine. yeah and the peak value of this is about 0.35 okay so it is almost one third of this almost one third of this so we can neglect we can neglect okay mm -hmm. okay now next is excuse me <laughs> yes for the previous uh, uh, question, we neglect the value of uh, the resistance for uh, the resistor because it's small in comparison with the inductor. Inductor, yes. right? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because we, we, we have to find out uh, the value of inductance. It says that the, uh, uh, the uh, you know, inductor is large. Okay. Inductor is large. But if you want to include uh, five, you can include uh, that will just make very small variation in your result. Okay. Now, control rectifier operating as an inverter. So you see, uh, this is the uh, you know, beauty of thyristor based converter that it is bidirectional in nature. It is bidirectional. But, but diode is not bidirectional. Diode based, remember this thing. Very well, never forget any. Uh, diode is unidirectional. Unidirectional. What is the meaning of unidirectional? Means unidirectional means the current will only flow in one direction. Current will flow only in one direction. So if it is a uh, rectifier, if it is a rectifier, diode based rectifier, this is AC, you will get DC. Okay. So power only flow from AC to DC, the current only flow from AC to DC. There is no reverse power flow possibility because of the diodes. Diode never operate in the reverse direction. Remember this thing, okay? Now, what we have seen in the diode based rectifier, there is a small uh, negative portion that was coming across the load. That was because of the inductor across the load, but it is nothing to do with the uh, diode. Di if you have a diode based rectifier, diode based rectifier always work in a unidirectional method. Way. That means the power only flow from one side to the other side. It, it, do, it does not flow from the, uh, in the reverse direction. It is unidirectional. But if you have a thyristor, uh, this can work in the bidirectional. Uh, the current can flow in the uh, other side and, uh, by just controlling the angle alpha, by controlling angle alpha. Now, if your alpha is from 0 to 90 degree, it works as a rectifier. It works as a rectifier. Rectifier means... Uh, it has this is AC. This is your power converter. This goes to DC. So from AC to DC, the power is flowing. This is called rectification. But now, if your angle is greater than 90 degree, if it is greater than 90 degree, you will see that 
the dc load start pumping current back to the ac side and okay it starts pumping back the power i will not say current i will say power it will start pumping power uh, from the dc side to the uh, ac side and that is called inversion or it is working as an inverter so the role of the inverter is to convert dc to ac so from dc to ac you can convert the power from dc to ac or you can reverse flow the power from dc to ac side by making your delay angle more than 90 degree okay <clears throat> so how it does the how it does the power uh, conversion from a, a dc to ac by changing the polarity of voltage by changing the polarity of voltage so it makes voltage negative the current direction does not change the current direction does not change current direction does not change does not change but the voltage polarity changes and as you know uh, as a uh, basic uh, you know electrical engineering uh, concepts that if you have uh, power uh, is equal to i into v as positive that means power is generated any uh, generated any and if power is uh, like uh, uh, is negative then it is in the other direction if it is you see if it is uh, uh, the passive sign convention if you remember passive sign convention uh, we 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 have shown that uh, the power is either can be generated or can be consumed any yes it can be positive or uh, negative any so in, in when it is operating as a uh, rectifier when it is operating as a rectifier you have this uh, load you have this load and this is the direction of flow of current and this is the direction of the voltage or polarity of the voltage so both have the same polarity so v not and i not both have the same polarity so power is positive power is consumed by the load power is consumed by the load any but now if you reverse the polarity of the voltage if you reverse the polarity of voltage if you reverse the polarity of voltage without changing the direction of current then the power will be negative negative power means it is now acting as a source any it is generating power so it is acting as a source before it was acting as a load now the load acting as a source any because of the reverse direction of the or reverse polarity of the voltage if you reverse both that means if you reverse the direction of current and you reverse the polarity of the voltage both in that case power again become positive so the load is is still like consuming power okay do you understand any so this is the thing thing that you, if you change the one of the thing either you change the direction of current or you change the direction of uh, voltage any so uh, maybe you know uh, i told you something uh, wrong that the current through the thyristor flows in the reverse direction no current does not flow through the uh, uh, converter in the uh, let me repeat this is your thyristor this is your thyristor current only flows from anode to cathode okay current only flows from anode to cathode current does not change current does not flow in this direction okay but power is flowing in the other direction power is flowing power can flow in both direction power can flow in both direction power can flow in both direction doctor yes um how how are we going to turn on the thyristors if we have a negative voltage in, at the input how will we will turn on any no we will turn on it with plus and minus we will turn on it with plus and minus any but we will see that the voltage across the load any changes okay we will see that the we will see that this will see and uh, this will be the voltage across the load and okay this will be the voltage across the load it's not the voltage across thyristor <coughs> is the voltage across the load so voltage across load is reversed and so voltage across load is reversed earlier it was plus and minus now it become minus and plus okay you see here mm -hmm. it goes negative and it is most negative less positive so overall it is negative and so this is the polarity of the voltage across the load so when this is the polarity of the voltage across the load and this is the uh, direction of current so the power is now minus i not into v so that means now this will act as a source it will act as a source so it will pump power back to the ac side it will pump power back to the ac side 
so the power is now flowing from dc to ac power is flowing from dc to ac so it is called inverter so it is called inverter so this is what is happening any not not across the thyristor any not across the thyristor this is across the load we are talking about the load so if you have ac and power converter and it is the power is flowing from ac to the dc side it is called rectification but if you have dc and you have the dc is flowing towards ac then it is called inversion okay so if the control rectifier work as an inverter the direction of current remains the same but the voltage polarity is reversed any that is minus id into v not so power is fed from dc side to ac side so for voltage reversal the delay or firing angle is made greater than 90 degree so if if alpha is between 0 to 90 voltage is positive this is called rectifier operation when alpha is between 90 to 180 voltage is negative and it is called inverter operation doctor mm. isn't alpha the conduction angle right yes doctor but if we if we start the conduction angle at the negative cycle of the of the power source of the uh, ac source then there should be negative voltage flowing through the side the thyristor and because the thyristor can only allow positive uh, voltage to to pass then uh, it won't work okay we will we will we will draw what is the voltage across the Doctor, the alpha is not the conduction angle it's the firing angle firing and <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah it is firing angle or triggering angle it is called firing angle or triggering angle or it is also called delay okay yeah now let us see how we will we will we'll, we'll plot and how the uh, uh, thyristor uh, voltage will look like and now let us see this is the you see uh, this is my source voltage this is my source voltage this is source voltage okay this is my positive and this is my negative cycle this is my negative cycle This is my negative cycle. Now, uh, when the alpha is more than 90, this is 90 degree. This is 90 degree. If it is more than 90 degree, say for example 150 degree, 150 degree. So the thyristor is start conducting at this point. It is start conducting at this point. It will start conducting at this point, and this is the voltage that will. And here, here we have triggered S1 and S2. Okay. then at this point i have triggered s3 and s4 okay so the output voltage output voltage will look like this let me draw with other color this is output voltage this is output voltage this is output voltage okay so here from here to here from here to here s1 and s2 are operating when s1 and s2 are operating the voltage across them will be zero voltage across them will be zero so from here to here so from here to here voltage across them will be zero and what will be the voltage when they are not operating when they are not operating this will be the voltage across them source voltage that you are applying so from here to here it is source voltage and then it will be zero voltage then it will be zero voltage okay and then it will be again the source voltage this is about s1 and s2 this is s1 and s2 and what will be voltage across uh, s3 and s4 so you see s3 and s4 they are operating from from here to here from here to here 
so the voltage will be zero and when they are not operating the voltage will be same as the supply voltage right? so it will be this voltage and then this voltage and then this voltage okay so whenever they are operating conducting the voltage across them will be zero when they are not conducting the voltage will be supply voltage voltage will be same as the supply voltage so what you see here what you see here that the when you have when you have started your the conduction at 150 degree then most of the voltage that appears across the load is negative this negative voltage negative voltage only small portion is positive only small portion is positive only small portion is positive uh, just a second I, a important call I, i'll take and then uh, assalamu alaikum uh, how are you professor Okay, uh, so you see, uh, you get the negative voltage on the uh, load side, so it works as a uh, inverter. Any. So this is what it is said that the power uh, load is, if the load inductor is high, the current ripple is neglected and the bridge is assumed lossless, then the power absorbed by the bridge and sent to the AC system is equal to minus I0 into V. So this is how, how it is operating as an inverter and so based on this you have the this uh, example it says that the dc voltage it represents the voltage generated by an array of solar cell and has a value of 110 volt so suppose this is your rectifier this is your rectifier and here is your solar solar panels here is your solar panels and here is your ac source that is your grid okay so the power from the solar should flow from DC side to AC side. This is your grid. This is your grid. This is called line commutated converter. This is also called line commutated converter, which is our uh, thyristor based rectifier. But this rectifier at this point, it is working as a inverter because it has it is supplying power from the dc side to the ac side any so this is important example because uh, this kind of thing you use any in the practical uh, installations so uh, you, it says that you have a solar uh, cells voltage of 110 volt connected such that the dc voltage is minus 110 volt it is connected in such a way that this is minus 110 volt minus 110 volt the solar cell are capable of producing 1000 watt so the power of this is 1000 watt so we can calculate the current because the voltage is given power is given now the ac source on the ac side it is a grid of 120 volt rms r is equal to 0.5 and l is large enough to cause the load current to be continuous so determine the delay angle such that 1000 watt is supplied to the solar cell so what should be the angle of uh, this rectifier this angle alpha so that it pumps power from the source side from the dc source that is the solar panel to the grid side any. determine the power transform to the ac side and the losses in the resistance any. so assume ideal scr okay 
so this is very important example from your exam point of view also running so look uh, we have 1000 watt solar panel so what should be the current that flow through the solar panel is 1000 divided by 110 which is 9.09 .09 ampere this is the current that is flowing from the in the load side but now it is not load it is actually source now the average output voltage of the bridge will be what average output voltage is i not r plus vdc because it is just like rlc load rle load yes it is like rle load any so this is i not is this this and the volt dc voltage is minus 110 so this is minus 105.5 so remember this will be negative voltage because you are uh, uh, pumping power from the dc side to ac side any with this voltage you can find what is the uh, angle alpha so the angle alpha is coming out as 165.5 so you see it is greater than 90 degree so when you operate the uh, bridge at 165.5 degree it will be able to pump 1000 watts from the solar to the to the grid okay and how much power does it pump it is given as minus v naught into i naught so this is minus 9 into minus 105 this is 959 watt so this is the power absorbed by the bridge and transferred to the ac system and is determined from this equation okay now what you is the power absorbed by the resistance is i square rms into r now since you have a, a large uh, inductance i just assume the rms current because there is no ripple if you have hard, large inductance you have no ripple so you have only dc component any so it is same as i naught so it is i naught square into r so you get 41 watt so this is it now this this is all about ideal condition ideal when scr voltage across scr is zero when we assume voltage across scr is zero now if you assume that scr is also having a drop of one volt so in that case this 105 will be also 107 volt and my uh, two scr conduct at one time so you have to add two volt in this so then the average current will be 5 ampere then the power delivered will be 537.5 and the power loss in the scr so the total power that the bridge will supply is this much okay so this is what you get when you have the non-ideal condition okay so this example is important from your exam point of view now we come to the three phase so have we come yes about the, the transistor being uh inverter uh i'm quite confused no no yeah. resistance not resistance is not becoming inverter this is the your bridge is resistor, becoming inverter. talking about uh, no the bridge before that to the yes. left yes. Uh, about the point when the trigger angle is more than 90 the transistor uh, work as an inverter so yes. in that point, he invert the voltage across the transistor or across the load. Because at the beginning, across the load. you said across the, the load. load, across the load, across the load, across the load. Okay. Uh, doctor. Yes. Uh, I I didn't get the why the VDC is a negative. The VDC become negative. You see, you have R, you have L, and you have battery. Okay. This is what you have. And here is your bridge. Here you have bridge. Any. But suppose this voltage is 100. And this voltage become 200. This become 200. Any. Okay. So suppose this is like this. So what will be the net voltage? Any? The net voltage will be? Minus 100. Yeah. So, so this is the meaning that the voltage of this side is with this polarity so the polarity change the ne negative so negative polarity you have seen before also that in any inductive load you see that whenever you have inductive load whenever you have inductive load you have seen that it it operates from here to here and then it goes in the negative also it goes in the negative also this so this is your this is your output voltage like this is your output voltage so here is your positive but here is your negative any so negative means what? Honey? It means if if overall this is 
so average is, is still positive because you have less more positive less negative but what happens in this case you see in this case you have more negative you have only small positive that means your net voltage is negative so that means negative voltage in the load is what negative voltage in the load this is your load negative voltage means the voltage polarity is reversed this is the meaning negative voltage negative voltage is appears like this okay and positive voltage appears like this okay okay thank you doctor now let us see uh, three phase so three phase uh, rectifier we assume first half wave rectifier half wave first we assume half wave so half wave is uh, like this is your thyristor which is connected to van then this is another thyristor which is connected to vbn this is thyristor connected to vcn so a b and c now va is vm sin omega t uh, vb or we call vbn or vb only so vm sin omega t minus 2 pi by 3 then vcn will be vm sin omega t plus 2 pi by 3 okay and you see here this is all common so which thyristor will operate this is number one say this is number three and say this is number or sasbsc or a, uh, we call s1 s3 or s5 or just sasbsc whatever you give the name so which one will operate the one which has highest anode voltage yes the one which has highest anode voltage because cathode is the same cathode is the same so if this is higher compared to this this will operate if this is higher this will operate if this is higher compared to the others this will operate so whichever has the highest uh, voltage across the anode uh, across uh, across the uh, uh, thyristor highest voltage that will operate honey okay so this uh, uh, this uh, converter this converter is uh, uh, a two quadrant converter this is also called a two quadrant converter this is called two quadrant two quadrant two quadrant two quadrant means it will have it can have positive voltage it can have negative voltage but the current direction is the same current direction is the same this also you have seen in in in, uh, in single phase also they can have positive and negative voltage but they can have only current in one direction current is not flowing in the opposite direction current is not flowing in any other it is only flowing flowing from one side to the other side anyway. so this is second quadrant this is two quadrant converter now first i draw the three phase waveform i have shown you how to draw three phase waveform to, to draw the three phase waveform, what do you do that? First, you draw the uh, horizontal scale, then this is zero degree, then you make uh, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, like this, okay? And then at zero, it is zero, at 30, it is half, 0.5, and then leave one, and then at 90, it become one, then next, it is all symmetrical. This is like half, then zero, then half, then negative maximum then half then zero so one cycle complete next after 120 degree you start one so this is zero then next ha uh, half leave one it is one block and, and then go to uh, the peak value leave one block half then this is zero then this and then negative negative peak like this so this is how you draw three phase now this i say phase a this i say phase b and say i say phase c now, uh, if you look here, uh, from, from this point onward, from this point onward, phase A is high, highest. Phase A is highest from here to here. Phase A is highest. From here to here, phase B is highest. And from here to here, phase C is highest. That means this will be my original alpha is equal to zero point for starting thyristor one. This will be my zero alpha. If it is a diode-based rectifier, straight away, you have seen that in half wave, this is half wave diode-based.
VA, VB, VC, neutral point. So from here, this is the point of reference from where the, you see A is highest. A is highest from here to here, all from here to here. That means A will operate, can operate right from the beginning at this point. If it is a diode base, straight away it will start conducting from this point. But it is thyristor, so it is up to you at what point you want to start. So this is my alpha is equal to zero point. And this will be my alpha is equal to 30 degree. This will be my alpha is equal to 60 degree. This will be my alpha is equal to 90 degree. And this will be alpha, yeah, 30, 60, 30, 60, uh, this is 30, this is 60, this is 90, this is 120. This is my alpha is equal to 120 point. This is my alpha is equal to 120 point. And this is my alpha is equal to 150 point. This is how you measure the angle. Do you understand this point or not? This is very important. Honey. If you have any confusion, please ask me now. Is it clear to everyone? So how you measure, yes, how yes. you measure alpha is equal to zero, alpha is equal to zero point is the point from where, this is the reference point from where you see that phase A voltage is highest, phase A voltage is highest from this point. So I say that this is my alpha is equal to zero. This is my alpha is equal to zero. Okay. So this is for phase A and this is for phase B, this is for phase C because from here to here phase A. Phase B is highest. From here to here, phase C is highest. Okay. So now, how we draw the waveform? So for alpha is equal to zero, what will be my output? This will be my output. You see, this is my output. Alpha is equal to zero. This is same as diode based. This is my output voltage. Now, what will be the output voltage if you have uh, 30 degree alpha? So this is my alpha, 30 degree. So I, this is my alpha. This is alpha, so this is SA, first one, this is SB, this is SC. So when SA will operate, I will get this as my output. And then I will get this as my output. And then I will get this as my output. And then I will get this as my output. So this is what, how I get the output at alpha is equal to 30. Understand? Alpha is equal to 30? Yes. Alpha is equal to 60. You see, when I say 30 degree, this does not start at 30 here. Look at this. This is 60 actually. Because the reference point is at this. Okay? The reference point is at 30 degree of the waveform. So my waveform, this waveform is nothing but sine of omega t. This is Vm sin omega t. So the starting point is here, but my uh, reference for the alpha will start at 30 degree. Okay? So my starting point is 30 plus alpha. The starting point is 30 plus alpha for this point. Okay. Understand? This is my alpha. So from here, I say alpha is equal to 30 degree. That means the starting point of the waveform is here, but my starting point of alpha is not at the same point. My starting point of waveform is here, but my starting point of alpha is here. Okay. So alpha is, is started counting from here. This point I call alpha is equal to zero degree. So this point I will call alpha is equal to 30 degree. Now this point I will call alpha is equal to 60 degree. Okay. This I call alpha is equal to 60 degree. However, this is actually the, this is actually at 90 degree of the waveform. This is at the 90 degree of the waveform. But for alpha, it is 60. For the waveform, it is 90. But for the alpha, it is 60 degree. How this is, we count alpha is equal to 60 degree. Okay? You understand? So can you draw now the waveform, the output waveform? You see, I can draw like this. I go like this until this point. And then I, I follow this second waveform. Then I follow the third waveform. So this is my output. So what did you see here? Here it was touching zero. Now here it is touching negative. It is touching negative. But when this will be possible? When you have RL load. 
This is only possible if you have RL load. If you have resistive load, then it will not go in the negative direction. The voltage will not go negative. It will not go negative. So for resistive load, how the waveform will look like? It will go here. As soon as it reaches zero, it, it will. And then this will start. So, and then this will start. This will be for R load. So this is a discontinuous conduction mode. So alpha is equal to 60 degree will be discontinuous for R load, for R load. Have RL load, no problem. It will go in the negative, no problem. It will go in the negative like this. It will go in the negative because you have inductor to support this negative. Understand? Once again, this is drawn for different uh, alpha, you see. This is same thing. I draw for different. Now, for the same, if you draw for 90 degree, what will happen? This was alpha is equal to 60. Now, let us draw for alpha is equal to 90. What will happen if you have alpha is equal to 90? It will start from here. It will start from here. It will start from here. Have more negative. Start. Yes. Inverting. No, it will not be inverting. It will be zero. You see here, average will be zero because equal negative and equal positive. Because we are talking about 90. 90 is your limiting point. You you see, we have discussed that if alpha is less than 90, it is rectifier. If alpha is greater than 90, it is inverter. What will be happen at alpha is equal to 90? Boundary condition. So boundary condition, you see that it has equal positive and equal negative. So average voltage is zero. Average voltage is zero. Doctor? Yes. Uh, is it exactly like the average is exactly zero or there is some deviation since? Uh, no, no, no. No. Exactly zero. no, no, it is exactly zero. You see here, it is exactly zero. It will be zero. Same equal positive and equal negative. Yeah, because I see the curvature is not uh, straight so the area of uh, in each uh, in each phase is no no it will be it will be same maybe same. it is when drawing you see like this but then if you yeah. it is you draw exactly it will be 9 0 now you see here uh, what will happen if you have a free wheeling diode so if you have a free wheeling diode in the uh, this is your thyristor this is your thyristor this is your thyristor and this is your load and now if you have a free wheeling diode here so if you have a free wheeling diode, what will it will do? It will not allow negative voltage. It will not allow negative voltage because as soon as this voltage become negative, as soon as it become negative, it will start conducting. Diode will start conducting. And when diode will start conducting, the voltage across the load will be how much? Voltage across load will be zero. Or practically, it will be 0.7 volt. But or uh, if it is power diode, like 1.5 volt. But uh, uh, ideally, it will be zero because this is short circuit. So if you have a freewheeling diode, then you see here, it will not go in the negative. It is same as your R load. If you have R load, it will not go in the negative. The same thing if you have a freewheeling diode, it will not go in the negative. Okay? Clear? So now what is the average voltage? So you see, uh, the uh, what is the period any, of the, uh, you see, total period is how much? 360 degree in a cycle, total period is, total period is 360 degree. And how many thyristor you have? Three thyristor. So each thyristor will conduct for how many degrees? Tell me. 30. No, no, they will oh. operate for 120 degree now nah, because this is uh, uh, totally 360 from here to here, 360 degree. So in, in uh, three thyristor has to conduct. So one thyristor will conduct for maximum 120 degree, another will conduct for 120 degree, another will conduct for 120 degree. So it, this will be the maximum conduction period of thyristor, 120 degree each. Honey. So now if you draw the, if you, uh, if you find the average voltage, how much is the average voltage? So, so for average voltage, the total period, so
so total period is what 1 upon t is 1 upon 2 pi by 3 this is the total period that is 120 degree and out of 120 degree this is pi by 6 plus alpha that means 30 degree plus alpha and this is uh, 5 pi by 6 plus alpha that means 150 degree you see here it is starting from my you see this is my sine wave this is my sine wave and i have to start my integration at this point i have to start my integration at this point and i have to finish the finish the integration at this point i have to finish the integration at this point and if i assume alpha is equal to zero or any other alpha i can write this point as 30 plus alpha i can write 30 plus alpha and my final period is 150 degree plus alpha because 30 and 150 because 120 degree is the total conduction so the total period is 1 2 pi by 3 the integration will start from pi by 6 plus alpha it will go up to 5 pi by 6 plus alpha this is 150 degree 150 degree and this is sin omega t vm sin omega t this is my sin omega t so i i integrate sin omega t from uh, 30 plus alpha to 150 plus alpha so i will get my all this derivation is given i get this as my average dc voltage 3 into v uh, line peak line peak divided by 2 pi into cos alpha okay so this is how you get the average voltage and and you will see that if it is a full wave, this because this is half wave. Now, if you take full wave, then this two will be finished. This two will be finished. You will have only three VM of one pi cos alpha. And this VLM understand that this is the line peak, line peak, line peak, line peak. So what we have shown here, sorry. you see this are you able to see yes yes doctor, I can see. okay so this is how you get the uh, so uh, remember that this is this formula is 3 into line peak upon 2 pi into cos alpha and then you can get the uh, RMS value. Okay. Now it says that the maximum average of the DC output voltage is obtained when the delay angle is zero. Same as the diode rectifier. So then what you get as the maximum voltage is this. And if just you put alpha is equal to zero, then you get the, uh, which is one. So it is three into V line peak over two pi. This is the maximum that you can get in a half wave rectifier. And then uh, uh, the RMS value you can just square this and under root then you get this as your rms well this is not very important rms is not very important average is important actually okay this is not important but just you can find out using the formula now if you have free willing diode so remember if you have free willing diode or if you have a resistive load you will not you cannot go beyond 180 you cannot go beyond 180 so that's why it is just put 180 here and then you can get the for the free willing diode and you get this as the formula for the free willing diode any okay now the next which is very important is the full wave three phase full bridge control rectifier three phase full bridge control rectifier so in this look here we have a upper group upper group And this is lower group. When the, they will operate, when they will operate, when the they have the highest positive voltage, then they will operate. When they will operate, when they have highest negative voltage, highest negative voltage, they will operate. Okay. Now, why they are numbered like this? One, three, five, you know, weird. Honey. So why they are operate like this? Because they operate in this sequence. 
नंबर वन देन नंबर टू देन नंबर थ्री देन नंबर फोर देन नंबर फाइव एंड देन नंबर सिक्स से दे ऑपरेट इन दिस मोड दैट्स वाई और दे ऑपरेट इन दिस सीक्वेंस दैट्स वाई दे आर नंबर लाइक दिस ओके सो एंड यू विल सी दैट इन फुल वेव कंट्रोल रेक्टिफायर टू वन फ्रॉम अपर एंड वन फ्रॉम लोअर will conduct at one time one from upper and one from lower will conduct at one time okay two thyristor will conduct at one time and this is a this is b this is c okay uh, and the average voltage if formula is 3 vm by pi cos alpha this we will come later and uh, you know in your book it is given like this which is vague and i will draw in more like clear way and let us see this and this is very important here uh, let us see what happened and now you see as i told you uh, suppose uh, your uh, number 1 and number 2 is operating so how the uh, switching diagram will look like so which one will operate this you see this is a and this is c so th it is operating like this current is going like this is going like this then you have the load it will go to the load then it will come here and then it will go to the c hmm so what will be the voltage across the load tell me what VAC. will be the voltage across the yes vac which is van minus vcn that will be the voltage similarly if you see any other uh, combination you take any other combination you take you will see that all the time line voltage will come across the load line voltage come across the load across the load but you see in half wave rectifier in half wave rectifier what was the voltage that was coming across the load it is only the phase voltage yes. because it was like this is neutral this is a so van so this was the voltage that was coming across the load so phase voltage was coming across the load so you just draw the phase you just draw the phase uh, uh, three phase waveform and you can draw the waveform across the load and you know the current through this and voltage across this or everything you can draw but if you have like a, a full wave bridge rectifier then you have to draw both line voltage and phase voltage and but because all the time the voltage that is coming across the load is line voltage so you have to check line voltage not the phase voltage okay so this is what is shown here is actually the line voltage is actually the line voltage so what i will do i have uh, three phase voltages i have three phase voltages and uh, what are the voltages v a v a n v b n and v c n this is my phase voltage and how you write this as v m sin omega t and how you write this vm sin omega t minus 2 pi by 3 then how you write this vm sin omega t 
plus pi i2 2 by pi 3. This is how you write? Yes. Then, now, from these three phase voltages, I have to write line voltages. I have to write line voltages. Understand? I have to write line voltages. Now, what are the line voltages? What are the line voltages? Line voltages will be VAB. Okay, a small letter or capital letter. VAB, VBC, VCA, VBA, VCB, and VAC. These are the six possibilities. Yes. A, B, B, C, C, A, B, A, C, B, A, C. Yes. It is like this. So we will have these six line voltages. So now I will draw first the phase voltage. You can draw this in the MATLAB also. So you draw phase voltage. I just draw like phase voltage. I draw phase voltage. VA, VB, and VC. VA, VB, VC. Okay? Remember, this positive group, S1, S3, S5. Negative group, S2, S4, S6. Negative group. So, this will operate when VA is highest positive. When, when VB is highest positive, this will operate. When VC is highest positive, this will operate. When VA negative is highest, this will operate. When VB negative is highest, this will operate. When VC negative, this will operate. Do you understand? Now, I will draw three phase sine wave. I have drawn three phase sine wave. Now, from this, I will draw the line voltages. So, I will draw line voltage. VAB, VAC, VBC, VBA, VCA, VCB, VCB. Okay. So AB, AC, BC, BA, CA. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then this and this together is 6. So 6 line voltages are drawn. 6 line voltages are drawn. You can Calculate this VAB, VBC, VCA. What is VAB, VBC and VCA? How you calculate? You see, VAB, VA is small. I will write, okay. Let us write this small. VAB is what? VAN minus VBN. And what is this? VM sin omega t this is minus vm sin omega t minus 2 pi by 3 you can calculate this analytically or if we draw phasor this is just to refresh your three phase so how you get vab and VAC and VCA. This is my minus VB. This is minus VC. This is minus VA. So VA minus VB will be like this. VAB. AC or VCA VCA VBA VBC VAC. And here, one more is left. VCB. Okay. So, all the six 
line voltages are drawn here. You can find the magnitude of the line voltage. We have already found this before. How you find the line voltage, say VAB. So VAB, either you use the trigonometric relation or you can find by using the parallelogram law, VA square plus VB square plus two times VA times VB times cos theta. And this theta is 60 degree. So this will give you root three V. This we have found before. And what is this angle? This angle is 30 degree. So the line voltage, line voltage leads by 30 degree. Leads by 30 degree. So this is all you see here. This is my VAB. This is my VAB, VAB, this is VAC, this is VBC, VBA, VCA, VCB. Okay. Do you have any question here? I will stop here because I will... Uh, in the next class, I will explain you the how we um, you know draw the waveform, uh, the output voltage waveform, and all this. But for now, uh, first you have to just to recall that this is the phase voltage, this is the line voltage, and uh, what is the relation between phase and line voltage that I have discussed. I mean, any question you have? Any question? All clear. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So now I will uh, uh, start your attendance. You can log in. Uh, doctor, I, I have quick questions. I don't know, sh yeah. shall I meet you later or? Uh... No, no, let me, tell me, tell me, tell me. But not about this lecture, about past lecture. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, okay, D doctor, you remember when we studied the half wave rectifier with RC? Yes. So I, I was just thinking, uh, for example, you said that half wave rectifiers uh, are not suitable for motors because uh, for motors you know for for half wave the negative part it will it will slow it will uh, speed up then it will slow down so it's not good for uh, motors yes. yes so with rc i mean there is no negative half so is, is it suitable yes you can use rc any uh, but then you see uh, uh, because in RC also, you know, you the you need big capacitor to reduce the, uh, the ripples. ripples. Yeah, but uh, you can use any yes. Okay. Anything else, Doctor? Also, yes, uh, one last thing. Or, yeah. Or uh, no, not RL. Just. Uh, inductor and uh, DC source. Yes. For this part, uh, I don't know. You said because uh, we covered uh, R and L with a DC source. So for this part, I don't know. To, while I was reviewing the recordings, 
I found that uh, you said it's a similar concept. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it is similar concept. Only uh, there is only a small difference. You know, the only small difference you see here. This is RLE load. Okay, so in RLE load, I mean, you have to understand that you cannot uh, operate your uh, uh, diode or thyristor until this point. I mean, until this point, I mean, you can only op start operating. I cannot see your screen, uh, doctor. Yeah, because I don't know this is uh, this. You know, I am also uh, this Webex. You know. Uh, Webex, you know, is is very bad, and it does not show me like where I am. I do not know, you know. <laughs> so, okay, okay. Now I think I'm I here. Okay, those who Doctor, want to leave can leave, and you know, we, yeah, those who want to leave can leave, and Doctor, yes, the attendance is not showing. Attendance is not showing, but in here it uh, is already shown, and uh, L zero two. L02 not showing. These technologies are not still perfect, you know. So, okay, let me start again for L02. What happened? No, not yet. You see, it's loading. Okay. Yes. Yes, yeah. No, it will. It it should appear now. Okay, for the RLE load, this is your RLE load. This is the uh, point where the two matches. Okay, this is yes. the point where the two matches. So as once your source voltage become greater than VDC voltage, then only you can turn on your thyristor or your turn on your diode. The diode will start exactly at this point, but the thyristor yes. will. Can you start after this point? Okay, this is your reference point of alpha is the minimum. So alpha minimum, so alpha you must be greater than this value. Otherwise you cannot operate. This is the only thing that is different than RLE load. And this is the difference in the I naught. Because I naught will be V naught minus VDC over R. So this alpha minimum thing is there, and this current that is the two thing only different. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is you are comparing with the L and E only. Uh, this is R comparing RL and RLE. No, I'm speaking about L and E only. No, usually you have some resistance, okay? Usually you have some resistance and you cannot avoid resistance. And you The load will have some resistance in it. So if you have only L and uh, E, then uh, it's still, it's, it's, this 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 thing is still remain valid, you know, because uh, your source voltage has to be greater than your DC voltage. Right? Then only you will start working. Right? But then what will happen that you see in this case, when you have RL load, we have to check at what is this equation has to be met. RI plus LDI by DT. This equation has to be respected. Right? So LDI by DT is equal to V minus RI. Yes. And yes. The, the V minus Ri, when, when V is greater than Ri, then you will have your current rises. When V is less than Ri, your current falls. But if you do not have Ri, then you have only LDI by DT by V. So, so you see, when your V is positive, your current will keep on rising. And once your V is negative, your current will drop falling. It will, it will start falling. Okay? Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, then. So that's it for today. So inshallah next week. Thank you.